Julie Joe, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. You can click the like button if you want, the subscribe button, but I think you might know that. So if you're not new here, <laughs> welcome back. I'm glad that you're here as well. Uh, look at my new stickers. Stay groovy, don't be a used plunger. I thought it was cute, that's so fun. I got some of my merch in the other day. By the way, I didn't make merch to make money. I made merch because you asked me to, but Thanks for buying it, I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, today's interesting. I'm very excited. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I have an Instagram and a TikTok. You can follow me on, at walkin underscore on underscore Lexapro. That's where you're gonna see more everyday content from me. It's more focused on education of scams and mostly multi-level marketing companies. But today, I had a little run-in with Brooke Ashley Banks. Anyone remember Brooke Ashley Banks? Honey, you must be living such a sad life. Yeah, that's her. That's right. So let's talk about it. So before I was blocked, I went on one of her lives and got some footage of that, chatted with her. So we'll go through that. But then I tagged her in a story. That really pissed her off. Got blocked. She made uh, stories about me and so on. You might've seen it on another YouTube before, but this was specifically aimed at me. Um, and it all happened within like 13 minutes. I'd say 13 minutes. I'm 15, I guess I could just round it up to that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started. Let's watch it. Buckle up, I guess. Make sure to do your research. But um, leaders are have leadership tenants and are held accountable. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so as someone who was a leader, like close to the top of an MLM, uh, you really don't even need a whole lot of success at all on your team. You just need a few si people who are successful and then everyone else just piling in, right? Just the goal is to get more recruits and more recruits. And it, they say never stop recruiting, never stop getting people on your team. Well, she, she has over 800 people on her team. She said that before. So we know that she probably has a few successful ones, but I guarantee the majority aren't because their own income disclosure says so. Four people, four people were at the top of their income disclosure statement. I'll do a deep dive on them soon, but let's continue. It's like a ball of success. <laughs> people rise together and that's what I love. So it ended up being where people would be like, well, hello, I want to do this with you. And I'm like, me? Okay. I mean, okay. And then people loved that. What, um, loved what each of my friends were doing and then they loved what their friends were doing and it just domino effects into people seeing people having fun and being confident and looking really good and then all of a sudden you would buy something and you would um you know she just saw my comment because it kind of like jolted her threw her off i said how many people are at the top this is me like i'm straight up just commenting i'm asking her um it's four and she's one of them oh you nasty all of a sudden you would buy something and people would love it and be like, everybody's been stopping me, asking me what different makeup and skincare I wear and things like that. I don't have the exact number. I'm at the top, but here is the, where that I do. It's four. It's four. You do have the exact number. Uh, because if I have it, you have it. No, it's mm. true. It's true. How many people want the top? Did you know most people don't want the responsibility of running a huge team? Did you know most people are just like, hey, Brooke, I just, I kind of want to like be in chill zone. I want to make a, maybe like 500 bucks a month, but I'm not trying to work as hard as you. I'm not trying to lead a big team. I actually just want to make enough where it's an extra stream of income to make my family more comfortable. Here's the error in that. Cite your sources, Brooke. Statistics show that only 9%, and this is not necessarily her argument, but only 9% join because they just want a discount but 91% join the MLM. And this is from the AARP, I will cite my source below, join because they want 
to make money. And why would you join and not want to make it to the top? They push for that as well, especially top leaders. They want people to be successful. They want people to grow because if they grow, the top leader grows. This is such a weird narrative. She said this also in the other video that I did about her. I'll make sure to put a card above with a video. Please go watch that because that's where she gets unhinged. Um, but I don't know. Let's see what I'm about to type. I really don't remember. And a lot of people, when they join, some people will say that they want to work. They'll get too scared. They'll get too scared of MLM haters. They'll get too scared of what this random guy from high school thinks. Nice. Nice. I said nice. Oh no. She could have clicked on my name and like seen my profile. I wasn't trying to hide anything. But then they'll stay in here because they're getting a discount at their favorite makeup. I do not ever um, want discounters here because discounters equal somebody just buying product and not making any income. I'd rather you be a customer. You know what I mean? But so, so yeah, I'm at the top. I was insecure. I can definitely answer your question. Uh, Lex, um, but I think that it's important to know there's a lot of people I work with who are like, Brooke, I don't want the pressure. I want to keep this thing fun. I want to bring in $500, $1,000 a month. So I said, so then I guess more people are in the middle than at the bottom or the top, which again, the, the income disclosure statement tells us otherwise. We know this. We know that more people are at the bottom of every income disclosure statement, by the way, of any MLM. All right, okay. Aiming for a large team and you have to, we have to be okay with that. So then an MLM hater could be like, well, not this many people aren't at the top, blah, 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 blah. But here's another thing. Eight out of 10 people who join do like nothing. They like, you're like, hey, how can I help you reach your goals? What are you up to? I'm totally here to support you. This is about you. Cricket, 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 cricket. Cite your sources, Brooke. You can't just throw a statistic out like eight out of 10 and act like that's just it. You're good to go. Cite your sources. Because I know you're false. I was also close to the top of a company. I remember. Pat. Is false. Oh yeah, yeah. So what I say is anyone who's actually working is bringing in income. It's like if you own Target, Lex and... Okay, so she called me Lex first off. I think that's kind of cute, but what, I think that's kind of cute. That's a good way to like, you know, like let's, you know, be friends or let's be more social. Um, First off, she's saying the people who make an income are the people who work. So, so what she's showing is the people who are like making an income, the people who are making money are the people who work. So anyone who's not making an income are not people who are working. But that's false as well. We know that's not true. There are top leaders in MLM companies. Like Jessie Lee said this before as well. Jessica said this and I can't believe I'm going to give her this. But she's talked about how you're not going to get paid like right when you start, like you're not gonna get paid out the butt when you start, you have to put in a lot, a lot, a lot of hard work. And um, I recently watched a training of, oh, it, it was Eric Worry, I think who said this, who knows, a top leader or an MLM coach, could have been even Fraser Brooks, said you're not going to get paid for your work when you start. Like you're not, and then talks about like, you'll get paid what you deserve. You're not gonna get paid what you deserve when you start. You'll get paid what you deserve in the middle and you'll get paid more than you deserve at the top, something like that. And she's going against that. But we know that that that's, that, that's not true. People who put in work still won't get paid. They won't. That's how multi-level marketing companies work. It's, it's really common sense. It really, really is. You hire a bunch of people, but then like eight out of 10 of them don't show up. You're going to fire them. They're not getting a paycheck. Well, they're not going to get fired, but they're like doing nothing. And you're like, well, hello, I actually, that's like a weird strawman fallacy almost. Like she's trying to argue something that just doesn't make any sense to what we're talking about. Eight out of 10 don't show up to target. What? What are you trying to say? Again, with the statistic as well, please, please show me. Now, maybe 
two out of 10 are successful, even though eight out of 10 work. I don't know. Like, I don't think that eight out of 10 don't work. And I do agree that maybe only two out of 10 are going to be somewhat making some kind of money. But for, for fact, from the AARP, they say 75 to 99.9% .9 of people will lose money in MLMs. The Federal Trade Commission says about 99% of people are going to lose money in MLMs and a lot of people will actually go into debt. So um, if, I can, if I can set my sources, Brooke, you can cite your sources, okay? I actually check in on people who aren't doing anything. I'm like, you know how to resign, right? <laughs> like, I'm just trying to have people working. Like, you know how to resign, right? Okay. Oh Lord, again. A fucking game. I don't believe that. So show us some evidence. Have you asked people to resign? I, in my opinion, I highly doubt that is true. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. It's the funniest thing. So, um, because I tell people, hello, this is supposed to be bringing you an income and our CEO trains on this. If you're spending 99 or 169 on your business box, and if any customers that are like trying to secretly get a really good deal, I'm like, stay a customer, <laughs> stay a customer. This ain't no, like everybody just spends money on the product. I hate that. My goodness, be a client, please. Like <laughs> help our statistics look better because you're just a client trying to get a secret discount, but signing up as a business, this is a, a hobby or at least something like you want to dabble somehow. No. So we again know that statistically 9% of people sign up only for a discount when it comes to the business. So again, I mean, that proves her wrong right there. That is a factual source. Facts are facts. They're not based on feelings. She's doing that laugh again that she did in the previous video that I've linked earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and link AM Psychology's video up here if I can. If not, I will link it in, this, in the sources. I've had trouble linking hers before. So I'm gonna link hers about Brooke's video and she's explaining why she's doing all that stuff. I see a lot of what she did in that video here as well. I mean, it's not as intense, but it's there. Um, and nobody talks about that, I feel like. No one, I mean, sure, some companies really are like, come on, be a kidnapper. I'm not trying to have people be kidnappers. If you wanna dabble in it, great, and I'll help you dabble in your goals. I'm not trying to force people to get to the top who don't want to, and I'm not trying to leave anyone behind who, who wants to really do something. But I think that something I've learned as a leader, and I know we're rabbit trailing, is I will see the utmost, and I get emotional about it because I am the underdog that lives in a house. Um, I will see people with the most um, everything in their favor. I'm like, oh, this woman could really do something. This man can really do something. And you just watch them just do nothing. And some of those people care about what Brandon from high school in 1999 thinks on Facebook, you know, or their mother-in-law who hates MLM, you know? And so they can't, but then they don't quit. And so then the statistics don't always line up. Um, but what I always say, it works if you work it. There's the buzzword sentence. I guess it's a sentence at this point. It works if you work it. And I asked, what about them makes you say, oh, they can really do something. I, I just was curious. I want to know what she, she says. And you'll get out of it what you put into it. It's like a gym. We can all sign up for a gym. And you can't get mad at the gym when you don't get your butt you want. There's the gym again. The gym. She used that again. So she used Target again from her previous video and the gym again from her previous video. Please go watch AM Psychology's video because she breaks that down perfectly. Why does she use those? Well, we know they don't make sense and we know that it's not the same situation, but AM Psychology does it very well. Also, go watch the video that I made about her. You're going to see a different side of her in that. Just trust me, it's, it's a mess. I make one post and um, expect to be a millionaire. This is network marketing. Look, I put in hours to get to where I'm at, but then this pays me more than any other job I could think of. I make one post and expect to be a millionaire? Absolutely not. They work hours and expect to get paid in some way, shape or form because that's how it should be, but not in network marketing. More than any other job I can think of. And my husband is a high school teacher and I make more than him off of this thing I decided to do on a whim that I didn't think anything was gonna happen for. But 
I fell in love with it. I got passionate about it. People saw my passion. People saw my confidence rise. They wanted a piece of it for their own lives. They're like, whatever you're having, you look happy. You look confident. That looks fun. I want to join those events you throw. I want to be on those Zoom calls where you teach people what you do. Because I'm an open book. I'm an, an open book. book. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just, it, it duplicates, right? And, uh, but some people I've said, I don't think this is a good fit for you. I really, I feel like you need to do something else. And some people just can't be their own boss. They think it's great that they're their own boss, so to speak, in network marketing. But then they're like the most lenient boss who lets their employee, AKA them, do nothing. Like, hello, if you were at Target, Target would have fired you for not showing up. And so this isn't like some get rich quick thing, but my goodness, if you work, it will work it. What about them? Um, it could either be their experience, their, their personality, their drive. You know what's interesting is I've had the most gorgeous women that I like fangirl over. Like, oh my goodness, you have so much more than I, you guys should have seen me. I was the biggest dork when I, I'm still a dork. Um, but I was like wearing like those old school Agnes and Dora like galaxy pants and leggings for <laughs> certain. My brows, it took me like years to figure out my brows. Like people would be watching my old live videos. Um, <laughs> they would be like, okay, I love you, Brooke. You're making me laugh or whatever, but I'm not learning how to do brows from you. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And so people that I see sometimes the biggest like, wow, end up doing nothing. Meanwhile, the mom who was at home just needing an outlet and phew, skyrocketing. Um, some women on my team make a great income is what I can say FTC regulations and they're full-time workers. Um, I get a 1099. So I'm an independent beauty guide. I get a 1099. And I will say, I'm glad that she said that and that she didn't say, yeah, I own a Sorry, everybody. And I, oh, I'm glad she said that and didn't say, yeah, I own a business with Lime Life. I respect that. I respect her honesty about that. But, but the sad thing is that, you know, there's a lot of dishonesty in here as well. I don't know. I think that a lot of times she wants certain people to join, get certain people to join, but people who join the MLM, you don't see a lot of people who are happy and excited and happy and good with their life. I know I said happy twice, but that's the right thing you, you don't you don't see a lot of people who are happy and good with their life joining the mlm like if they're happy with how it's going and they're solid and they're they're good you don't see them joining the mlm you always hear the sob story they they want you to have a sob story they want you to have this emotional story and be able to relate to other people who are struggling and that's why the mom a lot of times who is exhausted or who has worked really hard or maybe the uh, single moms and um people who do have full-time jobs, that's why you do see some of them do really well because they put every single penny and effort into it, but it's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. It's odd to sit here and think the people who are happy and go with life, they're not, they don't join an MLM because why would they need to? Because all you hear from people who join MLMs is a sob story and how this MLM has saved them. They give the MLM so much credit I'm like, stop giving the MLM credit. It has done nothing. The, the multi-level marketing company has done nothing for you. You are the one who's put in the work. You're the one that's done something for you. And a lot of times they always say, it's my, the MLM company. It's my upline. It's this, these products. It's They never sit and go, it's me. I did. I decided to do this. I put in the work to, to start healing. I made the decision to get up early. I made the decision to go work out. I made the decision to choose something that's going to make me happy. I made the decision to do this. And while they're making all these good decisions, which is great, they're also very likely losing money. So there's this like, weird paradox. It's like they are blaming their MLM for making them happier and healing them, which isn't true. They're doing it. But then there's also this other side of like, it's not healing them in any way it's actually the thing that's hurting them it's a paradox i'm in a paradox i have created this as an llc with my 1099 going under my llc so a lot of makeup artists a lot of salon owners really really love this career um as an addition because a lot of the pro makeup artists 
already use what I use. But again, Lex, I don't recommend people like on my team before you get to the six figure range, I would say you can use your, you can totally use your social security number because I'm not buying the stock for people to, to buy from me and paying sales. To, I used to own a boutique. So I used to own an online boutique called Northern Bell Boutique. That was my money pit. Talk about, people talk about how, oh, you have to spend $169 or $99 to start this. You guys, when I started my online boutique, first of all, we spent like eight to 10,000 on the inventory to keep up with initially, which is a very small amount for a boutique online. But just to create an LLC, that costs money. The government, the city, the state, they wanted so many different paper monies in so many different ways. No one talks about that. No one talks about that. And I'm like, why does no one talk about that? And that was a huge risk for my family. We ended up actually breaking even with my online legitimate non MLM boutique. And I would, I was in charge of the shipping. I was in charge of the packaging. I had to buy inventory, whether it sold or not. So then I'm sitting on it. And meanwhile, the money that came in from sales, if it didn't go to shipping inventory, I was the one photographing the models. I was the one, um, putting it on the website. I was the one buying a $75 a month website. <laughs> oh, nobody talks about that stuff. No one talks about that stuff. And, um, just to have all the extra money have to go right back into inventory because just because you don't sell everything, you have to keep inventory. And I would, I got to a place where I was too small to hire employees, but I was growing too much to do it alone. She did mention this in the video that I did on her, um, the commentary reaction that I did on her that I've linked and talks about just how much of a money pit it is. The thing is, only 20% of businesses fail after the first year. 50% fail after, was it five, 10 years, something like that. And a third make it past that. It's odd the way she's talking about it because she's trying to show that small businesses are worse, right? Cause you put in more effort, which you, you likely do. Um, you put in more money, which you do, but there's actually greater success in small businesses. It's likely that she just wasn't a great small business owner. That's very likely what it is. I mean, it might've been a money pit for her because she just wasn't good at running that business or running a business. So I love that Lime Life takes all that risk and I have like no risk and can do what I want from it. Um, but I tell people just goodness, be a responsible adult. If you go to a gym and you're mad that you don't have the butt, you didn't show up at the gym. It's not the gym's fault. If you get a gym membership and you really want a butt and you show up once a week and you go like this. Well, I showed up and I made nothing. Talk about gym, gym is such a scheme. I didn't get my butt. But nobody knows this and they're all like, oh yeah, you got schemed. You, you bought a gym membership that's so messed up, that stupid gym. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, what you don't see is your friends literally showing up to the gym once a week and going like this. Okay, let me walk, let me walk a lap. I showed up. AKA they make a post online or they're like nasty cold messagey. Like she's acting as if there's no such thing as genetics, but that doesn't play a part. And she keeps using that example, which again does not work for this entire situation. You know what I mean? Like take more self-responsibility. If I want a butt, I'm going to the gym and I'm earning the burn and I'm being consistent and I'm, I'm learning new things and learning that new muscles exist in my body because I'm pushing myself. She does victim blaming very well. She victim blames very well. It's such a difference and I love to spread truth on that because, and then I love to say this, network marketing might not be for you because you might not be able to be consistent. You might be too in your head but it could very well be for you. Network marketing might not be for you because you just might not be good enough. Jesus. I know that's not like the literal word she said, but like that's also in my opinion, what she said. For me, I was the underdog. I was the one teased. I was the mom that just had baby number three in a mom funk um, postpartum. And people would say, oh, you, people warned me, Brooke, you're gonna join a money pit. And now that I'm as successful as I am with nothing that was in my favor, no Facebook following. I've only been on Instagram for like six, eight months ish. And it's just starting to blow up because I've been consistent, but I had to stay consistent through none of the followers. If you guys would have looked at my Instagram, I would have had 1,850 followers like six months ago. 
followers. I hate that name, my goodness. You guys are like my, like my superpower supporters. No, I'm not. So it's just, it's perspective and it's more self-responsibility. And this is one company I can fully stand behind and say, if you decide to do this, it could really transform your life. It could bring in an extra income for you if you decide to actually go for it. If you obviously never talk about it and let this collect dust, is anything gonna happen with it? You're telling me I can be one of the four people at the top? No way. But you can be proud of what is inside because it's truly professional and truly like grade A. We are in Europe, so we, have to abide by Europe ingredient requirements and all of that. And I'm just, I'm so proud. If you guys know L'Occitane. If you're wondering why I'm rolling my eyes, it's because people in Monet say the same thing, but it still turns out that their products are shitty. So I just, doesn't help me think your products are better for some reason. I just don't trust that completely because I've seen other companies say that and it not be completely true. They are really good friends of ours. Um, anyway, all of that to be said. Um, and then the CEOs, know your CEOs. The CEOs here have taken money cuts to pay the field more. Their mission is number one, the client. They want to get the most professional high end products to you at the most affordable rate possible. Um, and then number two are the reps like me. Okay. They've taken pay cuts to pay reps more. A lot of the top leaders, So I will be doing a deep dive over Lime Life, which I'm excited for, uh, to see if that's actually true. I know a little bit about their CEO already. So here's what happens. Oh, let's stretch it out, let's stretch it out. Let's yawn really quick, I'm tired. Here's what happened. So AM Psychology did her video. I wanted Brooke to see it, so I made sure that she knew it was out there. That's what happened. <laughs> Short and sweet to the point. I made an Instagram story. And I'm hoping I can get a picture of it for you because I don't have it saved, but I can like get a little picture, I think. And I like tagged her and I said, you should watch this. I put the screenshot of AM Psychology's video and I linked it and I said, click here, Brooke. She did not like that. She screenshotted that, you know, and posted it on her story. And here's the picture of it. And she said, I'll be praying for you, boo. Don't pray for me, Brooke. Go ahead, don't pray for me. Peace of mind is better than giving you a peace of my mind. Yes, listen, Brooke, I wanna give you a peace of my mind as well, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to make sure that these videos are out there and that people know that that's out there to watch. You sharing that showed that there's a video about you that maybe someone needs to watch on your team. That's not good for you. It's like the other night when Skylar Lambert from Ariel, which we are going to do a very big look into Ariel and Skylar Lambert. Uh, it's like when she shared mine and Aaron's live on her Facebook. We got lots of messages after that. This is bad for her. And so she goes on to say, trying to be bring others down doesn't make you look good, honey. I'm not trying to bring you down. I'm just trying to show you that there's a video you need to watch. So, of course, she posted that and some people of hers messaged me by saying like, ew, here's an example, ew, shame on you for spending hours making videos trying to call out others. I said, I didn't make it, but I'll absolutely continue to call out scammers. It might not be a look that you like, but it's a look many others like. And Brooke went on to make this story. So interesting about direct sales haters is they try to protect women by creating pages filled with them Mocking and hating women. Mocking and hating women. Where, Brooke? I am wigless. Wigless. Where? Have I mocked you? Am I mocking you right now? No, I am showing what you are doing. I am sharing your videos and asking you to please cite sources because people don't think about that always. When you say something, People don't think, oh, she needs to cite a source for that. You do. People also don't realize that there are things like the Federal Trade Commission and the AARP who have good factual information and statistics on MLMs. So I go ahead and cite it for them. 
I make sure they know. And I show the manipulation. Where's the mocking? Where's the hating on women? We don't hate people in MLMs. Now, some people are just crappy people and that's fine. That's what everyone deals with in the world. But we do this specifically for people in MLMs, for people who don't know much about MLMs, for people who have been in MLMs. We do this for every human and there are some people that won't listen, some people who know what they're doing and are top leaders like yourself, and some people who really hate us and don't want us to expose them because they know that if they're exposed, shit goes down. They know that they're a fraud. Honey, you must be living such a sad life and my Lord Jesus says to pray for those who speak evil against you. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm also gonna call you out because you act like you're defending and helping women when really you're taking um, community away from them. You're taking... So really quick, one, um, Jesus and I had a conversation. He's chill with me. We're good. Jesus and I are all right. Uh, two, don't pray for me, Brooke. I don't want someone like you to pray for me. I'm good, homie. Spend your time praying for something else. And what evil am I speaking against you? Oh, oh, calling you out, holding you accountable for your bullshit. My bad. Sorry for holding you accountable. I'll let you continue to hurt people. Not. The fuck? Hell no. Why would I do that? Why would I let someone continue to hurt people? Absolutely not. Come on, let's think that through. If you want to call me out for taking community away from women, you mean taking them out of a horrible, toxic community that in my opinion is a cult and letting them go to a different community of their choosing, then okay. Uh, didn't know that was horrible, but we'll go with the flow. Then why'd you delete all of this about 10 minutes later? I don't know. You just gave me content. How am I thinking I better? I mean, I think I do maybe have better morals. You know, when I saw that it was a scam, I said, mm, peace. I think we're all on here on this rock in the middle of space trying to get by and trying to do better. It's sad that people aren't trying to do better in this situation, like her. It's sad that people are giving out false information, lying. It's sad that people are taking advantage of people. I wish I didn't have to do this. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to sit here and call her out. I wish I didn't have to hold people accountable. It's not always comfortable. It's not always fun. We bring lightheartedness to the conversation because sometimes it fucking sucks, but I'm trying not to get emotional. I mean, I'm super lighthearted and I, I don't really get emotional very often, but what I do is hard as fuck because I call scammers out. I have to make sure to conceal my last name so that people don't come after me. What we do is not for shits and giggles. What we do is fucking hard. And I don't think I'm better. I think I'm more educated. And I refuse to let people like Brooke continue to hurt people without someone like me stepping in. My motto, and I've said it before, is I want to be the person I wish I had because of people like Brooke. So now, I don't think I'm better, but I do think I have a responsibility in this situation and I'm gonna continue to do it. The people who keep me going, the thing that keeps me going are people watching this. My people, my friends, the messages that I get that tell me, hey, thank you for this. Thank you for what you're doing. I left my MLM today. I resigned my MLM today. I watched your video and it made sense to me finally. Something cleared. I feel like a weight is lifted off. I feel like I'm set free. That keeps me going. Anyway, a little like, you know, rant, vent session there, but no, we don't think we're better. We're not just influencers. That's bullshit. I've never been an influencer. I shared my story and people kept asking questions. And that's how I got here. I'm just a person trying to help other people and trying to advocate for those who can't advocate for themselves. Because 
At this point, a lot of them are still in MLMs and don't know how to advocate for themselves yet and don't know how to put words to feelings yet about what's going on. Because in my opinion, it is a cult and it is a serious thing. Anyway, venting again, let's keep going. You're thinking you're so much better and yet you do this and you try to grow a following by hating on people. My goodness, we are not the same and I'm proud of it. We are not the same and I am fucking proud of it. I've never been more proud. We are not the same. And I try to gain a following by hating on people. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that's how I have almost 90,000 people on TikTok, by hating on people. That's how I've gained almost 5,000 subs in like eight months. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because I uplift women, you tear women down. Really? Because every training video I've seen, at least that I've reacted to, which is one, <laughs> And it's so bad. I'm so dramatic. I said every video. I'm really not that dramatic usually, but uh, really shows a side of you that tells me that women below you fear you. We are not the same. My crowd reflects women uplifting women. Enjoy life. My life is very enjoyable. You seem miserable. And that is so sad. The cognitive dissonance in this video is obvious. <sighs> well, that's what went on. And then 10 minutes later, she deleted it. So I don't know. Who knows what happened? Um, and then posted something about her hair. Don't go give Brooke any hate. Like, I'm not trying to send hate or anything. I tried to light this candle about 10 times and it didn't work. It's just so upsetting. But I thought it was important to go through this and share this. And I guess I ended up venting. And well, I guess it was venting. I'm not really sure. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I hope that I shed some light on some stuff. Um, I just think that with all that's happened in the past few days with some things Aaron and I have been having to deal with and Aaron's texting me about right now, it's so interesting it's exhausting to watch people live in a whole different reality that hurts people. Anyway, sorry if this got a little sad and whatever, um, but I thought it was important to share. There's a lot more to come. Uh, let me know what you think this video below. Don't forget to leave your commentary and don't forget to be a member if you want to show a little extra support. Just $2, $5, and $10. You can choose one or the other um, or any of the three. And you get to be a part of my Discord. You get a little something from me, nothing crazy big. <laughs> I'm not rich or I'm broke pretty much, um, but I do appreciate it very much. And uh, you get first look into everything. You get first look at videos, you get all the tea. Uh, you don't have to wait for <laughs> videos to come out to get the tea usually. And if you don't wanna be it and you just wanna be a viewer, I appreciate you too. Really, I do. Leave your commentary below. Don't forget to sub, and I really hope you have the most amazing morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, I'll see you next time.